Happy 2021, everyone. I'm Heidi, your host of the Birth Story podcast, and I can't wait to get to know you a little bit better. Thanks for being here. It is the two-year anniversary of the Birth Story podcast, and for the next five weeks, I am celebrating with a short hiatus. I want to repeat the top five episodes of all time, including number one, my own birth story with my son Jagger Kai and my journey as a mom of a child with cerebral palsy. Then we talk about what is hypnobirthing with Michelle Smith. The third most popular episode was natural induction methods. All the pro tips from me on how to induce labor naturally and avoid the medicalized induction. Then in episode seven, Rachel Coley, the CEO of Can Do Kiddo, a pediatric occupational therapist who was just seen on Good Morning America. She teaches you how to play with your newborn. And in this birth story, she talks about trauma and darkness and how labor can take a left turn. The fifth most popular episode of the Birth Story podcast was episode eight, Meet Sage, my own personal midwife who practiced and is still practicing for over 35 years. And she tells all about her adventures in midwifery over several decades. So please enjoy this small hiatus that I am going on and listening to the top five episodes of the Birth Story podcast. Then when I come back from my little break, we're going to hear from Brittany Bergman of Expecting Wonder, Stacey Bronock on delivering in her car in rural Montana with very questionable cell phone coverage, Jasmine Katatakarn on fertility, Katie Carrick and how she broke her leg at 35 weeks. And then I talk with Kelly Bryant with Kelly Bryant Wellness, Susie Brantley on choosing IUI and single parenthood. Savannah Stonebrook's going to join us for a redemptive home birth story. And then I have Ariel Taylor from Carried with Love, very popular Instagram, and she's a surrogate. We're really excited to get back to you in just a couple of weeks with all of these new fresh episodes for 2021. And in the interim, let's get ready for some repeats. As always, you can find me on Instagram and on Facebook at Birth Story Podcast. I am one of the few who responds to DMs. So feel free to DM me and tag me. And I'm happy that you're here. And I am so proud to be part of your pregnancy journey. Let's do this. What does a contraction feel like? How do I know if I'm in labor? And what does the day of labor look like? Wait, is this normal? Hey, I'm Heidi. My best friends call me Hydes. I'm a certified birth doula, host of this podcast, and author of Birth Story, an interactive pregnancy guidebook. I have supported hundreds of women through their labor and deliveries, and I believe every one of them and you deserves a microphone and a stage. So here we are. Listen each week to get answers to these tough questions. Birth Story, where we talk about pregnancy, labor, deliveries, where we tell our stories and share our feelings. And of course, chat about our favorite baby products and motherhood. And because I'm passionate about birth outcomes, you will hear from some of the top experts in labor and delivery. Whether you are pregnant, trying desperately to get pregnant, or you just love a good birth story, I hope you will stick around and be part of this birth story family. Thank you so much for being here. In case you're brand new to the Birth Story Podcast, I'm Heidi, the host and also the author of Birth Story, Pregnancy Guidebook and Journal, a 42-week discovery into your pregnancy. It's all you need for the 42 weeks of your pregnancy, along with a journal and all your birth affirmations. You can snag a copy at birthstory.com. And I would love for you to use the code share the love. I am offering a BOGO for all birth story listeners. That's right. Buy one, get one. Just use the code share the love. I'll ship you two copies, one for you and one for a friend to give away, as well as a special gift. So I hope you'll head over to birthstory.com today. Snag your two copies with buy one, get one free. And again, the code is share the love. All right. Thanks for being here. And I hope you enjoy this amazing episode. Today, I'm doing something a little bit different. 
I have had so many inquiries on how to naturally induce labor, not only from like Instagram and my Facebook and my doula accounts, but pretty much with all of my dual clients. And as they come through the rotation of getting to about 36, 37, 38 weeks, everyone starts getting antsy to meet their babies. Another thing that's happening is that if they haven't had a baby by about 39 weeks, it seems that a lot of people are starting to have a conversation so early on about induction. Providers may say something like, well, if you haven't had the baby by blank, then we are going to go ahead and schedule your induction. So today I wanted to walk you through how to naturally induce labor when like air quotes, you are past your guest date. Okay, so this one is a little bit usually just free talk. Some of this is scripted because I wanted to make sure that I didn't forget to tell you anything really important. So if it seems like I'm talking a little bit less naturally, then that's why you wake up and you're 38 weeks pregnant and you think you are nearing your due date. But this is really better known as your guess date. You know, your baby could actually come at any time. I don't want to downplay this at all. My last couple of clients delivered at 33 weeks, 35 weeks, 37 weeks, and then the last two at over 41 weeks. Yes, it is a big range. It's a big guess. Your baby could actually come today. But if you are counting down the days to your baby's arrival because you're so excited to meet him or her and you just can't be pregnant any longer, just keep listening. So the average gestation for a first time mom, healthy, without interventions, is 41 weeks and one day. Your due date of 40 weeks is a week and a day early, and it's also arbitrarily based on the day of your last period, if you even know that at all. And it is a one size fits all model. So some of us ovulate on day six. Some of us ovulate on day 21. Sometimes the sperm and the egg meet quickly. Sometimes the sperm is waiting around for days for our sweet little egg. You really can't guess based on when you had sex. Even when my clients do IVF, this one astounds me, fertility astounds me. Like, you know your transfer date. They still go off the date of your last period. So if you've hit the 39 week mark, You go in and your healthcare provider starts whispering to you about induction, maybe even 38 weeks. Just take a deep breath and remember that the first unnatural thing about your pregnancy is that you are given a due date. It's a guess. It's a moving target. Your baby will come when he or she is ready. And in fact, only 5% of babies are born on their due date. Despite the fact that I am about to offer up a whole guide to natural induction methods, I want you to be patient before anything else. I also want to let you know that everything I'm going to review on this podcast today is going to be available for free for download on my website, birthstory.com. I definitely want you to sign up for this guide. Put your pen and paper down. If you're driving, don't worry about it. You can later go to birthstory.com and you can sign up to download this free guide. It is so important to me that you have this guide because it seems to be the number one thing that people are asking about right now. So just be patient, feel those kicks, sit down and enjoy these last moments of being with your baby. It is about to be over. And I promise you, you will actually be a little bit sad when your pregnancy ends and that cord is cut. I know it's really hard to believe that right now as you're like rubbing your aching back and you're propping your swollen feet up and you are, you're done. You are done being pregnant. I get it. If you have been listening to this podcast, then you have heard that I gestated until 43 weeks. I know exactly what it's like to be done being pregnant. As your virtual doula, I want you to relax. But if they're planning your induction 
and it's the best thing for you and your baby and your healthcare providers have discussed it, then, you know, I don't really see a reason to not try a lot of these natural induction methods. Or if it just seems like things just aren't getting going, I'm not going to offer anything that has not been proven to be safe for you and your baby. Uh, Many of these things are just uh, traditions and old midwives tales that we pass down. Some of them have clinical research behind them. Some of them are anecdotal. Please bear in mind, I am not a doctor. I am not a midwife. I am not a healthcare provider. I have been a doula at the time of this recording for 15 years and am going off of my experience and my research and my training. So... I have personally done every single method that I am recommending. So the number one thing that I learned is start early in the morning because no one wants to jumpstart labor at night. Your natural labor is likely going to kick in at night. So we want to do some things to prime it during the day when you have energy. Put your pins down. This is going to be a downloadable free guide on birthstory.com. Number one, make labor oil. So what is Libra oil? It's a half a bottle of almond oil, a half a bottle of castor oil, and 10 to 20 drops of clary sage, 10 to 20 drops of lavender essential oil. So you're going to shake that up and then you'll just kind of put a few drops over your belly and rub it into your belly. You'll wrap your belly with saran wrap and then you can add a heating pad on low heat for about 15 minutes. Now, this recipe is compliments of my doula mentor, Molly Patterson in Eugene, Oregon. I could just say, raise your hand if you use the labor oil effectively and hundreds of hands are going to go up. So the labor oil is, it feels good. It's very relaxing. It smells delicious and I believe it works. Number two, nipple stimulation. So you want to hook up your breast pump or get intimate with your partner. So about 15 minutes at a time, several times a day. Also, this is key if you want to use the labor oil at the same time. So you can do that setup with rubbing the labor oil on, wrapping your belly in saran wrap, putting that low heating pad on, and then either hooking up the breast pump for nipple stimulation. And of course, put the bottles in because if you have any colostrum or milk that comes in, you want to catch it, put it in your fridge, save it for your baby. So the next thing that I did and I recommend is black and blue cohosh homeopathics. I bought them on Amazon, but you could buy them at your local natural food store. I know that they have them at Whole Foods and some of our local markets. Take them as directed. The ones that I ordered, it was three to five pellets every few hours under the tongue. It is going to depend on what you buy from your store or Amazon. So read the directions, do it that way. But black and blue cohosh are often used together throughout labor. So blue cohosh is a plant. This is where this podcast gets really funny because I'm not an herbalist, but colophyllum, thalicitroides. I mean, I just hope everyone's laughing. I have no idea. But blue cohosh is a plant. Black cohosh is equally painful to try to pronounce. But black cohosh is also a plant. Historically, these herbs were used by Native Americans as a uterine tonic and for various gynecological support, like reducing hot flashes and night sweats. But in labor, these herbs can be a powerful uterine stimulant. They come in um, homeopathic tablets. You can also get them as tinctures or capsules. The next thing I highly recommend to all of my clients is to have sex with orgasm and ejaculation because I'm specifically talking about semen. Don't worry. I work with plenty of mamas that are both single and that are in same-sex marriages. And so number four on my guide is going to talk about two parts. We'll talk about orgasm, which applies to everyone, but the ejaculation piece, I'm specifically talking about the effects of semen. So the semen will soften the cervix and ripen the cervix because we do know that there are prostaglandins in semen. We do know that we use prostaglandins like Cytotec or Cervidil to induce labor. Labor. So semen seems to have the ability to soften and rapen the cervix when you have sex 
with ejaculation. So this is really important. So like that the semen is a very critical part. I hope there's not a lot of little ears listening because I definitely make this podcast explicit. But if you are uncomfortable and sex is super uncomfortable, then I sometimes say if they could finish, you know, you could do something else, but then finish because what you're looking for is the touch and then the semen too. So also orgasm will release loads of natural oxytocin, which can stimulate those uterine contractions. If you're single or your partner is out of town or whatever, masturbation is a great way to achieve orgasm for that release of natural oxytocin. When you are just snuggling and holding and touching your partner, you're also releasing that natural oxytocin. So everything about like sex, touch, orgasm and ejaculation have some benefits for helping to soften and ripen that cervix. One of the things I want to remind you about that I end up having conversations with all of my doula clients is that your cervix is hyper irritable and there's lots of capillaries. And so penetration can irritate your cervix and also burst open those capillaries. So it is possible that you may spot after you have sex. It's very important to notice the difference between like spotting and bleeding. If you are just spotting a little bit after sex, it's likely that your cervix is just a little hyper irritable. It also might be because it's softening and opening and those capillaries are bursting open. I do not recommend having sex after your membranes or your amniotic sac has ruptured because of the risk of infection. Specifically talking about this topic, if you are interested in more evidence-based research, I am a huge fan of evidence-based Base birth. You can go to evidence based birth and I'll link to it in the show notes. Hey, it's Heidi. I'm interrupting the podcast to let you know about a free resource that I've created for you at birthstory.com. All you have to do is go to birthstory.com and then click the tab that says the workbook. Once you put your email address in, an entire resource library of all of my secret sauces are available to you for free as my thank you for listening to the Birth Story podcast and being part of this community. At birthstory.com, under the workbook, you will find a birth plan template, articles on circumcision, delayed cord clamping, flipping a breech baby, packing your hospital bag, acupressure points, placenta encapsulation, and so much more. There are over 20 free articles ready for you to download at birthstory.com. Now let's get back to this amazing episode. Um, So number five, getting a prenatal massage. All of my clients are sent for an induction massage at the end of their pregnancies. I want to spoil them. The oxytocin from that touch can really jumpstart uterine contractions. It's just much needed relaxation and softening of the muscle tension. Number six is chiropractic adjustment. Do it. I believe in it. This is a critical factor in achieving your best birthing experience. It opens up your pelvis. It helps make sure everything's in alignment and it promotes an easier and faster labor. Your chiropractor really helps balance the pelvis. It just really, there's a lot of unnecessary tension in your ligaments and muscles when you're pregnant, even just from sleeping in weird positions. And it just kind of like lends that helping hand to get the baby in a a proper birthing position. So when your baby is in a better position and your body is in a better alignment and position, your ability to give birth naturally is increased. Number seven on my list is acupuncture. The data shows that there's no adverse effects to mom or baby. Acupuncture is amazing. And I went religiously to this amazing woman named Kristen. Acupuncture is part of Eastern medicine. It really just targets certain points on the body that will naturally prepare it for labor including prostaglandins, which again, we talked about soften that cervix and oxytocin that trigger the contraction. So when you have the natural release of these hormones, labor can gradually onset. 
and can typically lead to a smoother, less painful delivery. I'll just give you like a quick overview of what it looks like. I mean, you go in and there's like, you know, Zen music and like waterfall and twinkly lights. Um, But it's these very thin needles that penetrate the skin. And in Chinese medicine, it This acupuncture is linked to the belief that the disruption of labor or even diseases, things are caused when the flow of energy in the body is disturbed. So acupuncture will stimulate those points on or under the skin called acupuncture points or acupressure points to try to release this key. When I was experiencing acupuncture to try to induce labor, I felt like I was getting a massage, even though no one was touching me after the needles were in, the baby became very, very active. It was really, really cool. And I just remember that she like was taking my pulse on my left and my right. And I just remember her saying like, your body's not ready. (laughs) And it wasn't. So number eight on my list is walking and specifically the miles circuit. So have you ever heard of it? So the miles circuit was developed by two doulas to help position your baby in the ideal LOA position, which is left occiput anterior. And that is like basically where your baby is head down, kind of facing down on the left side. This is the ideal laboring and birthing position. It is a labor set that is exceptionally powerful to help regulate or speed up an erratic or slow labor. You can go to milescircuit.com to learn how to use the mile circuit during your birthing. Just a quick reminder again, this entire guide is free, downloadable at birthstory.com. Number nine on my list is inserting evening primrose vaginally. You can even start doing this around like Most of my clients probably start around 36 weeks. You might be able to warp your arm around your belly and shove it up there yourself. If you are single, you can get creative. But if you are partnered, then I would have your partner insert the evening primrose for you as close to your cervix as possible uh, with freshly washed hands. So um, do this right before you go to bed just so it doesn't leak out right away. When you get up to go to the bathroom, I know you're going to the bathroom like 10 times in the middle of the night. So when you get up to go to the bathroom, you are going to see little drops in the toilet that look like oil. This is the evening primrose oil. It has nothing to do with bodily fluids, like no bodily fluids coming out of you for labor and delivery look like olive oil in the toilet, right? So evening primrose oil, if you've never seen it, it looks like, you know, you put olive oil in the toilet. Evening primers oil, EPO, is another term for it. It's a rich source of essential fatty acids, especially GLA, and that functions as a precursor for prostaglandin synthesis. So again, we talked about the effectiveness of prostaglandins ripening and softening the cervix. Number 10, I'm sure you've heard it all, foods. Eat spicy foods, dates, eggplant, cantaloupe. These are all like, you know, again, traditionally old midwives tales that we talk about, like stimulating the GI tract, getting everything going, vibrations in the colon that could lead to vibrations in the uterus. Also help to like kind of clean you out before you have a baby. So eat some spicy foods, dates, eggplant, cantaloupe. Some people talk about pineapple too. Power in food though. Number 11, see a reflexologist. And so this is very similar to acupuncture. We talked about there's acupuncture and acupressure points. Acupressure to me is a little bit more painful than the peaceful acupuncture, but it is effective. Fair warning. It's it's not like you go in for acupressure and it doesn't it doesn't hurt. I went to an acupressurist And, oh, he had a tool. He didn't speak English, just Chinese. And he had a tool and he just kept saying, it hurt, it hurt, it hurt. And I was like, oh, it does hurt. But it produced very strong uterine contractions, I will say, within about 30 minutes. So it involves physically applying pressure to points running along your body's meridian system. 
many people believe that acupressure can induce labor because many pressure points increase the blood flow to the uterus and then they stimulate the contractions and then they can influence your hormones. Number 12 is red raspberry leaf tea. And its nickname is a uterine tonic. So again, it's found to be safe for mom and baby to drink in pregnancy. It's the leaf from the red raspberry bush. And it can be, you can serve it hot or iced. You can steep it for one to four hours. Um, When I was using red raspberry leaf tea, I would put it in mason jars at night with like two to four bags. And then I would let it steep overnight and I would drink it as a cold brew. Most of the moms that I work with start it around 36 weeks, if not sooner, with maybe just like one drink. But I mean, it's kind of a joke in our little birthing group because most of the moms are drinking it kind of like all day long at the end, but at least like three to four times a day. But again, studies have shown no negative effects for mom and baby. And then traditionally, this is thought to, we do this because it's thought to prime that uterus. Okay, we are on the very last recommended technique and that is castor oil. Last resort, last resort, fair warning. So castor oil, oh gosh, how does it work? It stimulates the EP3 receptors that are found in your uterus, and those cause the smooth muscle fibers to contract. So again, the overriding theme with all of these things are position of your baby, uterine contractions, softening and ripening of the cervix. So this is one castor oil that's thought to cause those uterine contractions. Castor oil is you like this is used at the very end. It's not recommended before 40 weeks. This is when like you and your provider, either you're out of patients or your provider is like, you know, I really am thinking that an induction might be the best thing. And there's a lot of different Every, let me say this. Every single provider seems to have a different set of rules and regulations for induction. The ARRIVE trial points to inductions at 39 weeks for first-time healthy moms. You can Google that ARRIVE trial. But ACOG, the American College of Gynecology and Obstetrics, doesn't really have a lot of pure indications. Like as an example, macrosomia, which is big baby, it's it's not really, it's not an indication for an induction, but just because it's not like indicated doesn't mean it's, it might still be recommended if that makes sense. So at the end of your pregnancy, you get to 40 weeks, they're going to do some non-stress tests uh, where they just monitor to see if you're having any contractions and then your baby's movements and heart rate. And if everything looks good, Usually your provider will allow you to keep being pregnant for up to 42 weeks. I've had many clients that have had such beautiful deliveries at 41, 41 and a half, 42 weeks gestation. So anyway, last resort, castor oil. Got it? I'm doing a lot of talking on purpose because I want you to understand that this is, okay, end of the road. And this is why flipping not, right? You're about to go in for your induction. It's scheduled. It's 48 hours from now. You aren't in labor yet. Maybe your cervix is ripe. Like they told you you're 50 or 60 or 70% effaced. And maybe you're one or two centimeters dilated, but you're just not in labor yet. And let's face it, you're done being pregnant. So if this is the case, The data shows that people have taken one fourth cup, which is about 60 mLs of castor oil. And you can take it in like a milkshake or a smoothie, yogurt, orange juice. Um, It really doesn't have a great taste. So definitely mix it with something delicious and then get it down as quickly as possible. Please only do this one time. I did it two times. That was, and I I think I did it two times so I could teach all of you it was a mistake. So just do it one time. Most likely you will not have any GI upset, but it can cause some pretty good diarrhea. You should consistently contract even if you don't go into labor. Important things about castor oil. Uh, It is not recommended before 40 weeks and it's not recommended if you've had a previous uterine surgery like a cesarean. So if you're going for like a VBAC, then ignore this this one. If you've had like fibroids or, you know, any kind of uterine surgery where they're scarring, then 
erase this from your mind. This castor oil is a first time healthy mom or a third time healthy mom, whatever it is, multiparous mom that um, has not had a previous uterine surgery. Got it? Mix it with something. And even though it was studied at a fourth a cup and 60 mLs, I... I still like think that's kind of a lot. Um, maybe start with an eighth of a cup and see how your body tolerates it. And then you can, you know, do the other eighth of a cup. The other things that I really believe in and that I coach my clients on at the end to have patience and relaxation are drinking a glass of wine. And by a glass of wine, I mean like four ounces. So just something to relax you. Getting into the bathtub and relaxing at night. Uh, with hypno anesthesia from hypnobirthing. My favorite is Melissa Spilstead, Surge of the Sea. And when I was hypnobirthing my babies, she just covered me in hypno anesthesia very easily. If you are scheduled for an induction, it is okay. I am the first one to tell you that I elected, like raised my hand for an induction with my second baby, and I achieved a wonderful, all-natural childbirth with just a little bit of Pitocin. I have been with many moms that have had such beautiful births with an induction. Don't be afraid of it. If it is happening, right, and the safest thing for you and your baby is an induction, then I want to give you all of the peace and power that it is and can be a still a beautiful experience. So thank you guys for joining me today from this variation from birth stories to talk about natural induction methods. And everything that I discussed today is available for you. I made it for you. I put it together for you because I want to help you and empower you. I want you to be at peace And I want you to have tools that are safe for you and your baby that are natural. I have this entire guide to natural induction methods for you for free. I can't wait to put it in your hands. I hope you have a beautiful and wonderful birth. And when you do, write into me at hello at birthstory.com so that we might be able to share it on the podcast. Thank you for listening to Birth Story. My goal is you will walk away from each episode with a clear picture of how labor and delivery might go and that you will feel empowered by the end of your pregnancy to speak up, plan and prepare for the birth you want, no matter what that looks like. 